Hi, I'm Marty Johnson from 3D Systems, and I'm here to introduce you to a set of training modules we put together for you to help relay to you the information that we've learned along the way to make your figure four printer a success tool so that you can get the success as fast as possible. I'm gonna start with module one for safety. This is gonna be a high level safety training, uh, meaning that I'm not gonna go through and read our safety manual, but I do wanna to touch on some high points and I also wanna be sure that you understand where to go get all of the detailed safety information that involve both our materials and our hardware. The objective of module one is to focus on the safety information for the use of the figure four printer. This includes hardware, material handling, usability of the printer and its materials. After completing this module, the student will be able to identify safety symbols and definitions, identify the required PPE, understand the electrical safety best practices, understand material handling and safety, and very importantly, know where to get safety information from 3D Systems website and know where to get the SDS information for all figure four materials. For safety symbols and definitions, you will have the caution sign, and these will be labels that will show up. Sometimes they will be on labels for the material. Sometimes they will be labels or stickers within the hardware or on some of your accessories that you get that go with the hardware. So I wanna be sure to point these out, and once you see these, you'll know where to reference and what, you can, what each one of these symbols means and what the detailed information should be on that. Uh, the caution symbol indicates the possibility of loss of data or damage to equipment. The warning symbol indicates the possibility of injury to personnel. The harmful irritant warning, which is the exclamation point in red, this indicates that skin or eye irritation could result while exposed to a chemical composition. Eye protection indicates the need for eye protection and do not operate the equipment without covers. Uh, that's, that's very important. One thing you'll see at the bottom is a link. The link will actually take you to, this is the link for the figure four standalone printer. And it will take you to the user guide where you have all of the information that we're discussing in this particular module. And there are links to each particular smaller subtopics that will be available as well. The other safety symbols and definitions are to wear gloves, and it's very important to wear the appropriate gloves when required, and required means when you are handling or touching surfaces that may contain or have been exposed to materials, we want to wear, we suggest wearing nitrile gloves. This includes printed parts that have not been through the post-process and post-cure as well. So we're always handling parts with gloves until they've been all the way through the post-cure. Hot surface hazard is accessible in the vicinity of this sign behind the access panel. Avoid these contact areas. Hot surfaces can cause burn injury or fire. And you wanna allow these surfaces to cool before touching if you need to be in that area. Uh, access panels are for service only. It should, should be open only by certified service personnel. Safety symbols and definitions. You'll see the electrical shock hazard High voltage electricity is accessible in the vicinity of this sign or behind the access panel. Access panels are for service only. It should be opened again only by certified service personnel or trained maintenance personnel. All exposed circuit, electrical circuits are contained within limit, limited access cabinets. 120 vac power is present in multiple locations throughout the unit's internal casing. Whenever performing maintenance procedures, it's very important to power down the machine and unplug the AC wherever possible. Ultraviolet radiation, UV, invisible UV radiation is accessible in the vicinity of this sign or behind the panel. We do use UV radiation to cure materials. It can cause eye injury or blindness, burn injury and or fire. And also avoid breathing in high atmospheric concentrations of material fumes. Whenever you have a, a concentrated area such as a closed up printer and you go to open up the cover to that printer, you want to pause and give that a few seconds to let your internal ventilation get that out of the, out of the concentrated area that's right above the print area. Personal protective equipment consists of uh, Protective clothing when handling print material. This includes closed-toed shoes, full-length pants, splash-resistant lab coats or equivalents, 
Wearing contact lenses when working with print materials is not recommended. Uh, we'll be sure to highlight that. 3D Systems recommends using 100% nitrile gloves. However, other chemical resistant gloves will suffice, but do not use latex gloves because they will not provide complete chemical protection. Material handling, the material SDS, you need to read that before using a material. So and that can be found at the 3D Systems website on the materials page at the link given. If you go to our website, any material that we have on our website will contain an SDS link so that you can get that for that material. There's also a, a emergency contact number there for SDS. There's also for when you get an, a package, you want to be sure to inspect the package. Bottle materials are packaged in shipping cartons, but when you get those, be sure to inspect cardboard, carton exterior for signs of damage or leaking. If there is leaking, do not open the carton. Contact 3D Systems Tech Support Hotline. Some standard material handling practices. We touched on some of these. The harmful irritant warning. Always wear chemical resistant gloves, such as nitrile gloves, goggles, and protective clothing when handling print material. Avoid skin contact and avoid breathing in print material fumes, as I mentioned earlier. Always practice standard lab hygiene and follow PP requirements outlined in this manual. Also found at the link below. Again, always wear chemical resistant gloves such as nitrile when working near the materials or with partially cured parts. Avoid breathing in vapors from print material. When opening the build chamber, allow a few seconds to pass before putting your face near the opening. Always wash skin thoroughly with a non-abrasive soap and cold water after working with print materials. Do not use hot water or solvents to wash hands as that can stimulate your pores and result in a more absorption through your skin. Some print materials are flammable. Care should be taken during print material containment and cleanup operations. The following are listed in detail at the link below. Be sure to follow best practices with material handling safety for each, and that includes figure four material storage. It's recommended that you store your materials in a fire resistant storage cabinet. If you've got a print material disposal, do not dump print material down in any drains. Disposal information is on the SDS and more detail at the link below. Print material spill containment, is also given at the link below. Some major spills are unlikely with the smaller quantities used in figure four, but some spills can occur. Again, I wanna point out that this information is in detail. If you go look at material handling and safety at these links, you can find more detail on all of this information. Fire safety, uh, warning to use National Fire Protection Association Class B extinguishers such as carbon dioxide, dry chemical, or foam. A spray of water might also be effective. Do not use a direct jet of water or smothering to extinguish burning resins or solvents. Firefighters should use a self-contained breathing apparatus and full protective clothing in the event of a resin fire. Do use extreme care when handling ethanol or IPA used to remove excess print material from uncured parts. Ethanol and IPA are very flammable. Everything up to this point applies to both figure four standalone and figure four modular printers. All safety information again is in the user guides at the link below. We will, re we will add the link for the modular system in here as well once it's posted on the info center. The next items are gonna be some specific things to safety on the figure four modular printer. One will be the compressed air safety. Figure four modular uses compressed air. It's supplied by the customer to tension this resin's trays resin trays membrane during printing. These guidelines should be followed regarding compressed air, and that includes all pipes, hoses, and fittings must not have a rating below the maximum pressure of the compressor. Air supply shutoff valves should be located as close to each printer as possible, and hose ends must be secured to prevent snapping off in the event of an accidental breakage. For emergency shutdown of the modular, in the event of, that you have to do this, immediately unplug the power cords from the backs of all printers and the controller. Do not position when you're setting up the machines and the 3D systems installer should have already installed your printer such that it is not difficult to access the power inlet on your system. There are two ways to shut down the power in an emergency. One is just to pull the cord to shut down all power to the printer. You can also shut down the 24 volt power supply by using the power button on the upper right hand corner. This does not, however, cut current going to the power supply. Hopefully that's pretty self-explanatory and that and it's very important to know where you can get that information and that it is in the user guide. 